So the NVIDIA app just had an update that allows you to automatically overclock your GeForce GPU with literally one click, improving your performance in all games. It also does this without any sort of risk of damaging your GPU, nor invalidating its warranty, meaning you no longer need these apps to configure the overclock, then benchmark and do that process over and over again to get the perfect overclock. NVIDIA can literally do it all for you now. To download the latest version of the NVIDIA app, you can do it via the the website or if you've already got the app you can just head into settings then in about you'll see this box here called early access where you can opt in once you've opted in if you close down the app then reopen it you'll get a pop-up asking you to install the latest version of the nvidia app and if you do so it shouldn't take long at all and after all that you'll see a new icon called system where under the performance section you will find the new automatic overclocking feature where you can literally enable it with just one click right here you'll see that once you've initiated the automatic tuning it will scan your PC. NVIDIA do state that this scan may take 10 to 20 minutes and they recommend that you leave your system unattended to achieve the best results, which what they're saying is try to avoid any sort of GPU intensive tasks while the scan is performing. Once it's finished scanning and it has indeed initiated the overclock, you may get very similar results to this on screen and you can see it has been quite conservative with the overclock. You can see for this example here, the GPU tuning is up 165 megahertz and then the VRAM tuning is up 200 megahertz and that again is somewhat a conservative overclock it will only get you a very slight fps boost however the results may vary depending on what pc you have may that be a low-end pc a medium-end pc or high-end pc the increased clock speeds will differ and for some it could actually affect your pc negatively rather than positively like for example some games might not like this boost in megahertz and it might crash it or you might get something completely different that basically makes your pc unstable so luckily there is a restore button right here if you do test it out and it doesn't work out for you you can literally just click it and go back to normal or if you like it and you do see an increase in performance and you do want to keep this on you can as well like nvidia themselves mentioned before this will not void your warranty and it will not cause any damage to your gpu so overall i can recommend it as safe although on the other hand i do have to say that with nvidia being a beta app this new update may have issues and it might not be implemented as great as it could be like down the line you've got to remember that when it is running this automatic tuning it's using a sort of algorithm that is fairly new so this algorithm of like scanning your pc taking like 10 to 20 minutes can only get better so if you don't want to try this right now and you want to try it in like let's say a few months you're very welcome to do so and i probably would actually recommend it now think about it but with it being conservative it's definitely worth a try and i wouldn't worry too much after you have overclocked though and you do want additional performance you can go into the graphics setting here and go into global settings where there's more settings that we can optimize and starting off we've got the rtx digital vibrance this uses ai technology to make the game's colors richer brighter and just cleaner which does overall look really nice but it's a personal preference option I myself like to keep this off. Next is CUDA GPUs. This lets you specify if you want to use one or more GPUs if you do have multiple. I myself leave this to one or the default GPU and I think it's something you should do as well. DSR or Dynamic Super Resolution Factors is a kind of outdated technology that can improve the image quality but it does this via rendering the image and scaling it at a high res. But I don't recommend you do this as it can hurt your FPS in game big time. Instead I would consider using a new technology like DLSS that does this sort of process way better and will boost your FPS. Image scaling, this adds a upscaling technology that's paired with a sharpening filter to basically output an upscaled sharpened image of a lower resolution that can actually give you a decent performance boost but it does come at a caveat of making your game look a lot worse. So again you're probably better off using DLSS. Low latency mode, this is a mode that can reduce your latency a ton in competitive of games does this by removing the rendering queue between the cpu and gpu which basically removes one latency step from you clicking your mouse to it reaching your display resulting in overall lower system latency however i myself have found that this does differ from pc to pc so it's something you really need to try for yourself for most people i think on is the best setting to use as it's a good middle ground of getting low latency and great frame rate but i myself have noticed that using ultra can give me slightly less fps however on seems to be really stable and it's something i recommend max frame rate this option allows you to cap your fps to a max setting i recommend you 
actually set this to off as you can do this max frame rate cap in most games anyway. Monitor technology, this setting will probably be only visible to people out there whose monitors do support NVIDIA G-Sync. If you don't know what NVIDIA G-Sync is, it's responsible for adjusting your monitor's refresh rate to become dynamic, causing display refreshes only when a frame is sent from the GPU, which can solve issues such as screen tearing. Overall, G-Sync can be useful to some as it does have a lot of benefits, but if you are going to use it, you need to ensure it is set up properly. Blurbusters.com tested G-Sync monitors and they did confirm that a frame rate cap of 3 FPS less than the refresh rate of the monitor will give the lowest slash best latency for G-Sync. So if you are using G-Sync compatible, make sure you've set it up properly. If not, though, you can just use a fixed refresh rate. Power management mode. This lets you choose between power and performance on your graphics card. After my testing, I found that the performance setting didn't increase my FPS by a lot. It wasn't really noticeable at all. What it did do, though, is increase my temperatures and power usage. So I myself found overall it was best just left on the default one or normal option rather than performance. It's something you can test out on your own PC though. Shader cache size. This stores any shaders that the game has to compile in real time for use later. Normally, the larger the shader cache, the less likely you are to have to regenerate a shader, resulting in better performance in the worst case. The downside to this though is wasting disk space on a larger shader cache. So most people like to put this setting on 10 gigabytes as it helps with frame rate stuttering and even improving startup times. I myself though like to keep it on default as I haven't noticed much difference at all on my PC setting it to 10 gigabyte. It's just the same on both. Then we've finally got vertical sync and virtual reality which both of these I just leave on the default option. So that's use 3D application setting and I've got virtual reality off as I don't use that. As a final note I want to tell you guys about the drivers section too. A lot of people forget that you can actually update your drivers inside the NVIDIA app and you can see everything that's actually been changed on them. So here under gaming we've got some fixes for GeForce Experience which a lot of players do use along with some other things regarding monitors and stuff like that. Same with new hardware as well as optimal settings for newer games. If you play X Defiant this driver may actually be appealing to you. And then another thing that came out recently is this uh, free game pass as well. So if you actually want to try out the game pass which has a ton of free games you can do so and you get three months of it. All you have to do is go into redeem and literally redeem it like so. It's super simple and it's a great way to get some awesome games like Pal World and so many more for completely free. But that right there was some additional sort of GPU tuning settings you can apply in addition to the overclock settings. If this helped out, feel free to drop a like and subscribe. And before you do go, check out any of my other videos on screen right now.